So my my question was, uh, how can uh, children's television affect adolescents or children? And um, especially, so I read um, like uh, it was originally from like a magazine. Um, I forgot. I forgot what the magazine was called, but it's about um, a guy named Doug Grimmett who was like who it says like founder and creator of the and creative director of Atlanta's Primal Screen. And he like uh, basically it's just credible and he said that uh they're like he gave four different tips like how to make a like a good and like balanced children's show. Uh, one of them being like the show has to like it has to teach and has to like interact with the child. Um, and not like use them as like a target for advertising. Um, the second being uh, as to like stand out from other shows, like as to kind of be unique in its own way, like whether that be like the kind of animation or uh, you know something. And then third being um, be direct in lessons and moral messages. So like. The lessons kind of, it has to be like, how they talk has to be kind of like a, like obvious to like toddlers who watch the show so that they can understand the messages and be able to learn. And it also has to like be fun so that it can like interest or pique the child's interest and like, so they can have fun. And I think that's a picture of the grip. Um, one of the shows, I wanted to go over was a uh, uh, peep in the big white world, which is something I watched as a kid. And then this show, like, kind of, or I guess the show kind of stood out, but this episode specifically, I like remembered from my childhood. Um, so what happened in the, <laughs> what happened in the episode was a sure that's the red one. Sure, like has a cup of water and it disappears, and. Uh, her friends, Duck and Peep, they like hide in a booth and wait, or like do a stakeout to try and find who stole their water. And like nothing conclusive happens. And the next day the water's gone again because they like, they like set up some water bait. And uh, and then Peep tells Chirp, I guess water can just disappear. And I thought that was kind of weird because it, it didn't really, like, it didn't really describe evaporation at all. And, uh, it, it was hinted at, though, like, kind of, because it, like, the opening to the episode was just, like, a bright sun. Then it, like, did a transition down to trip on a tree or something. And, yeah, I thought that was, I thought that was weird. And then, is a political cartoon I used, um, which it just has two men looking through a, like one of those, I think it's called the maternity ward, just where the babies go, like in the hospital or something, and there's like little televisions attached to them, which is just like, kind of like a metaphor or a hyperbole or something that uh, just emphasizes that. Um, children will kind of just look towards TV, you know, like the, like educational shows, and that's, or I guess before school, that's kind of just where you get to learn. Um, then, this, I included the Ops blog one that I talked about one time in class. Uh, that, that's hot. Um, and he, okay, so let, let me back up a little. So, um, there's this one episode of Ops Squad called Training Day. Uh, the entire show is just about getting rid of oddities and whatever. And the two protagonists for the first season, Olive and Otto, they, uh, like, they meet Todd, and Olive reveals that Todd was her old partner. 
and Todd stands up from the other ages for like two different reasons. The first being he does all the math problems in his head, like uh, while all the other ages say it out loud just for like, just so that the kid can learn and whatever. Uh, and then he just like started being odd and um, and uh, there, I think he was kicked out of Bob's squad because he like screwed up a mission on purpose or something. And it was like these dancing houses that were like rocking back and forth. And he was like, "That's pretty cool. We should we should have let that be the way it is because it looks kind of cool." Then, like the leader of Odd Squad was like, "The number one rule of Odd Squad is to do no odd," which is like, I, I said on here, like conformity is good because laws are meant to protect and, uh, yeah, as was said, manners are meant to be polite, but it can also like not be good, like if you feel like too strict because. I feel like weirdness is also like a uh, like a like a, a main contributor to personalities, like which I didn't think was too good. Um, and then for the solution, I thought, uh, oh, I also want to talk about Journey for a second, like how he like dumps his pills in the garbage in that one video. Like I can't think of it. But uh, the solution was uh, was to just like monitor what your kids watch, or for the parents to just monitor what their children watch, and um, so that they don't watch like anything that they don't think is like healthy for their child to be like taught, or uh, you know stuff, like, you know. <laughs>